Oh my goodness, no, no, of course not. Um, no, in fact, I, I kind of uh, had avoided writing about Cairo for a long time because I didn't want a sense of, um, you know, uh, like overwhelming nostalgia or uh, uh, sadness to, to come into it. And I think that during the revolution, we were really um, energized at the idea of, of reclaiming the city and stopping the terrible things that were happening to it. Apart from loving Cairo as my hometown, um, it's a unique city. Um, all cities are unique. But Cairo has a continuous history, really, for right. just thousands of years. And you get everything in it. Every possible type of architecture, every kind of landscape, every kind of natural uh, sort of elements of nature, every kind of person. It's an incredibly rich city. And what I would wish for more than anything is to see that treasured and celebrated. And I mean, in, in other words, like we have incredible buildings that are either being allowed to fall into decay or that are actively being ruined and pulled down. You know, spaces along the river, just and one of the most wonderful things about the revolution actually was seeing people appropriating the space, right. like people climbing on the lions of Osrini, people just setting up little plastic chairs along stretches of river that they had not been allowed to do before. And mm. that sense of appropriation, it needs to be a little bit more organized, but I think the city has the most amazing potential. That's something that I've heard other Kyrians talk about. I've lived in Cairo myself and I felt that uh, in the Mubarak era, that there was a sense that the city wasn't really their own. Yeah. So perhaps seeing it after the revolution, during the revolution, being appropriated like that, gave people back a sense that this was their city and that maybe that they could make it some of the return it to the grandeur of the past. Yeah, absolutely, of course, yes. Um, that you could look after it, that you could look after it and uh, allow it to be what it really is, you know? It, it's like, it, it is an amazing city, but it is so, so covered in the detritus of, of corruption and neglect. When I um, interviewed Nawal Sadawi about this topic, she drew a distinction, a sharp distinction actually, between the revolution itself and the political transition. And while she remained very hopeful about the revolution, about all the hope and the change in mentality that that engendered, she was less hopeful about the transition. Is that broadly where you are? Um, I mean, I guess I'm not certain, of course, w what exactly you mean or she meant by the transition, but if what we mean is that the, the period, the three years of political action since the revolution mm. have been disappointing, um, then yes, yeah. absolutely, of mm. course, of course, because, because every government that has come in has tried to kill the revolution while actually sort of speaking in its name and pretending that what it is doing is in order to um, safeguard the gains of the revolution. But this is just all hollow, it's empty rhetoric. What they've tried to do is to just sort of bury it right. um, and carry on with the old regime, the regime that actually the revolution was against, but dressed up in new language. And now it's not even dressed up in new faces. Now it's even the old faces right. that have come forward to somehow implement a revolutionary agenda. I mean, you know, it's completely ridiculous. Well, let's move on to talk about the revolution. Um, I've heard the radio interview that you gave on February 11, 2011, uh, the day Mubarak stepped down, and that was um, a moment that I think uh, ushered the Arab world into a new era. Um, in that interview, you obviously you sound very excited, the excitement is palpable, the emotion is palpable. How do you feel now, three years on? I am certain that um, a process has started, and uh, a change has happened within people. A, they know that they're facing an existential threat, that basically, if the country is not changed radically and is not put on a path of um, something that looks like social justice and human rights, then really uh, I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen to it. Um, it's a question of survival, really. And, um, and people now 
have articulated what they want and they're not going to forget it or go back on it and have realized that they can make change. Now, of course, the problem is that the change that has been made has not led to anything better yet. And so you can be disappointed and disillusioned in it. But in the absence of an alternative, you really just have to, to keep on. And so I think people have found their voice, have articulated what they want, have realized the gravity of their situation. And so, you know, there's no turning back. And so I still feel tremendously hopeful that, um, you know, in a few years we will be on the road to where we want to go.